Thank you for coming to watch Dr. Smith's video today. We encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the alert button. That way you can get notifications when he uploads a new video. Thank you for coming today. So we hope you take the time to hear and think about it. And if you have a book, read in the book about the concept and the topics that we talk about. They have a lasting effect. The intent is not necessarily to treat pain, but to make permanent long-term correction with your whole family and your friends. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert button. Have a good day. Have a good day. I, I should have a notebook that I write them down while I think about them during the week, because I'm pretty sure I have some, but maybe they'll come soon. <laughs> Part of the reason we have the class is to give you an opportunity to dig deeper and ask, yes, I hear you, but what if this and what if that? And a lot of people, a lot of people have been misled. They've been deceived. Uh, <clears throat> I don't like to use the word down, 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 but not having received the whole truth. Uh, a lot of people with health problems work in fear, not faith. And part of the reason we have this class is to add two things, knowledge and fire. I thought you were going to say power. That's power. <laughs> part of my challenge is to motivate you to do the things that you know you should do, they can do, and many times even small things like we discussed today, many times small things done often create major changes long term. I've had a lot of people tell me, and I tell them too, what I do to you here is not near as important as what you do with what, what they teach you. If what they teach you is applied, I guarantee your health will be better and better. It will get better and better in small ways, continually that over and over time. I can guarantee you another thing. If you don't use it, it won't, it won't work, <laughs> okay? So keep that in mind. Now today, today the class is about, about the, the word subluxation and from the book, pages 8 through 15. Now you can read that anytime on your own, but I want to give you a quick synopsis of the concept and we'll expand to go from there. In about 1895 in Davenport, Iowa, there was a fellow named uh, Dr. Palmer, D.D. Palmer. He was a doctor of, and he did natural therapies. What, whatever was he could find at the time. And he worked in an office building. The janitor was a, a black guy. He was deaf. And one night, Dr. Palmer got to thinking about how the nervous system works with the brain, the nerves that go out to the different parts of the body. And he said to the Harvey Little, the black guy, may I check your alignment? So he laid him down and felt his back and neck, and it felt like something was out of place. So he applied pressure and to put it back into place and worked it. He did that a few times and he got his hearing back. Miraculous, he had been deaf his whole life. And so guess what happened? He told his friends who were deaf <laughs> and a lot of deaf people came to see Dr. Palmer for, to get their spinal line. But a lot of the people who came had other kinds of health problems, headaches, heart problems, liver problems, kidney problems, and they started to get well. So to make a long story short, Dr. Palmer started to teach other doctors 
and that's how the Palmer College of Chiropractic started in 1895. Now, since then, it was, it's expanded all over the world, a lot of different ways to move the spine, but the bottom line is what, what they're all focused on is the concept of the word subluxation. Now, if you divide that word, sub means less than, luxation means a dislocation, something, something is out of place, not where it should be. So today in our discussion, we're going to expand upon the concept and I'm going to correlate it with the triangle on page 27 in the book. We're going to talk about mental, emotional, spiritual subluxations. They make people sick. We talked a little bit about chemical subluxations, which, as you know, would be something misaligned in the gut. Maybe your colon is not clean. Maybe your liver is not clean. You not have, don't have the proper flora in the small intestine. So something is out of alignment for where it should be. So you have decreased health. And then, of course, we'll talk about the spine and I'll relate to you how it's related to the different parts of the body and with the concept of subluxation. We'll start at the top. I use the word fear. <clears throat> fear is opposite of the word faith. Most people who are sick have been diagnosed with a, with a disease or a condition, and they're told something about the condition. And when that happens, that's the focus of the care. Usually it focuses on pain rather than lack of function. There's a difference. Many times the symptom or pain is caused by, I'll refer to it as a trigger somewhere else on the body, but it's created a problem in that area. <clears throat> so they have fear. And when you have fear, you subtract the energy flow that comes to you from above down and inside out that does the true healing. All healing occurs that way. <clears throat> If you have lack of faith in the creator and the created, created you, you know, you have a, de a deficiency in the healing potential. You will not get as well if you don't believe you have that power. In my profession, that power is called innate. Innate technically is your portion of the power of God. And professionally, we call it universal intelligence. It's your portion. And it's always available to you at 100%. In the book, I make a statement that the greater your faith and something that's true, the greater the power. It's important to remember because the opposite is true. The less you believe in the truth, the less power it has. So many sicknesses exist, many symptoms exist because of lack of faith and lack of belief. And truthfully, that goes back to a lack of knowledge. The, the more knowledge you have of something that's true, the more faith you can have in it. That's part of the reason we have classes. So that's part of the reason that I explain to you concepts and principles to give you both a knowledge and belief 
so they have more power to heal more things. Now, if we, if we talk about faith only, the way, you, the way you gain faith in reality in anything is to use it, to challenge it, to have it expanded. It has to be exercised. So next time you have a wound, a, wound, a symptom, know that the power that made your body is the power that can heal it. And the greater your, your belief in that, the greater your hope in that, the, the more chance you have of complete healing. Does that make sense? Now, the real test is when you have a problem. I saw a fellow today who had a skin rash and on his arm and he didn't know what caused it. So I asked him a simple question, simple question. What did he put on it? Well, he happens to be a believer. And he said, nothing. My body will fix it. The question is, what triggered it? And he has a couple of ideas. He's eliminated a couple of things that he thought maybe irritated his skin. And his skin is truly healing, healing aggressively, how do I know that? Because he has a low grade inflammation. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about that for a minute. A low grade inflammation is part of the healing process. It includes redness, pain, swelling, and heat. Those are, so the four common signs of inflammation. A lot of people like him, it's acute, it's short term. You'll probably be gone in less than a month. The t tissue will be totally healed from the inside out. Um, it will heal faster because he believes in it. Now, some people I have come, I, I ask when they have those problems, what are you doing? They say, oh, I'm putting this stuff, you know, stuff on it. They, they think the stuff is going to fix it. And it never, ever works that way. It may subtract symptoms, it may change the way it feels, but all healing comes from the inside out. So the less you believe, the greater the significance of the subluxation in the mind. And when, you have a, when, the, when the mind doesn't function properly, it affects the emotions that are connected, like a positive and negative pole. <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in the electrically in their body. Any questions about that? What if you have, like, you brought up a rash, so you have a baby, yep. six months old, and she develops a rash. I have a little granddaughter who's kind of got a rash around her mouth and yeah. one in behind her knees and that kind of thing. Doctor says it's eczema. Yeah. But she's been fine up until now. Okay. So I'm just curious because... What was the trigger? Well, this is what my daughter did was change her laundry soap. And she says it seems to be helping. But I don't know what the trigger was. She can't nail it down to one thing other than it's cleared up quite a bit since they changed to a... Most, condi most conditions have multiple triggering causes. When you start to talk, talk about that, the first thing that came to my mind is that ch child probably has a digestive issue that's significant, not minor, significant. Why do I say that? Because during the fetal development, the skin, the outside of the body, and the lining of the gut, the inside of the body, formed from the same neurological basic tissue. Usually, they're related. The skin problem, the gut problem. Now, if you have a minor to moderate gut problem, and you have a chemical problem from the outside, like so, and it can do the same thing. 
you can same as true with toothpaste with hair shampoo with lotion that you put on your skin you can use the same one over and over and over and have love it until something else weakens in the body and then all of a sudden that thing that you used to love now becomes an irritant becomes a trigger that's why i recommend that you do in your life what god has done with the universe and that's seasons change 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 so you get a wide variety and you know we complain about the cold weather but it's really good for us to have the cold weather because it helps our body to become more adaptable to the change same with the humidity so i would with a child like that i would i of course do what she's done change soap but i would also take some of the flora plus and capsules and put it in the food to help reestablish more healthy small intestine flora the small intestine flora is the foundation for the immune system okay any further comments that that was my biggest one but also um coming from someone who used to have eczema it oftentimes laundry soap is a big deal but everything that's in or around the skin so if she's using body wash or you know any soaps or lotions or all the lotions potions that kind of stuff really needs to be clean and careful and fragrance free that will help stop the triggering but the more that the gut can be um, not irritated also the better so the baby's six months old probably not is she breastfeeding or is she being fed rice cereal breastfeeding just getting into solids yeah so, so i would be real mindful of the foods that she's being yeah. introduced to and make mm -hmm. sure they're real like avocado egg not the boxed package stuff that has other stuff that could also be a trigger okay all right that's very common there's a lot a lot of baby food serves as a trigger okay I, I tested a baby's blood last week she's 10 months old and that poor baby and the mom hadn't been able to breastfeed her and she was feeding her the very best infant formula that she could find like expensive goat milk based all the stuff and when I looked at the label the first thing I said oh, oh no <laughs> like it was just like don't do this and it's all she's been fed for her whole life and her blood shows it hmm. that's, and that's sad. yeah it's that's very, very sad common, and the mom was yeah. devastated because she was trying to do yeah. the, the best, best thing for her. yeah yeah so that very that very principle that you just explained is a subluxation mm -hmm. it's a lack of knowledge it's like a the truth getting through completely so there's a deficiency that causes disease can i ask one last question sure if you're going to break up flora pills or how much would you sprinkle in her food the whole thing you just mix it up in her food yeah. the whole pill yeah okay. do it all the time okay i have a question now <laughs> um back to being formula fed versus breastfeeding well, with with my little kids, my mom wanted me to introduce rice cereal, real real thin, at like I don't know four weeks, six weeks, and I did, and I also fed them mashed bananas or whatever, but I was breastfeeding. I hope they are okay. You know them now, but so if but a lot of them are taught just only milk until a year or two, and to me that sounds way wrong, way off. I don't know if that is or not, but particularly if they're just when they're breastfed, they're getting what the mother is eating. So exactly. there's a certain amount of variety in their in their food. But with a formula, isn't it? It's it's never right. It, God designed it right. Yes. Better than man could ever design. A so formula. they're they're literally eating one thing what? for that year or whatever, right? The milk. The the formula. And that's bad. Because there's no variation to right. that. It's right, and and you go back to the mother and breast milk. If a mother breastfeeds the child and the mother is 
functioning properly mm -hmm. with her system and is on a, <coughs> an appropriate dietary intake, there's nothing better. Okay. And during the 18 months, the baby doesn't need anything else other than mother's milk. Okay. As long as they're thriving, and you can see that visibly. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. It's uh, it's common. Okay, it's common with babies, especially, and we see that often. I saw one last week who was, sits in an infant chair, slumps down, leans forward. So when I check when I check the infant, there was significant spinal misalignment. That's called subluxation. So there's no way the digestive systems could function properly because the nerve flow was like not getting there. And it would not get there. So the, the big change with that child was modify the posture of the infant in the chair so they don't, don't slump. So they lay back further. So a lot of infants form faulty mechanics, habits, and they sleep that way too. They maybe sleep always with the head turned right, you know, always with one arm back, and that's a subluxation that's spread into other areas. So let me talk about the spine because we're in that area. In the spine, I, I call it the spinal column pelvic unit because it's the head's included. So if the head is crooked, we have a problem. If the head is crooked, it's subluxated. If the, the container, the, I'll call it the brain container. If the brain container, the container that holds the whole brain, the eyes, the ears, is distorted, there's no way it can function at full capacity. That's why it's always important to make sure the head is move, moving correctly and aligned pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but very close. Then the, then the neck, seven in the neck, 12 in the, where the ribs are, five in the low back, and then the sacrum and the pelvis. That's the spinal column pelvic unit. Now, I'm going to tell you about three different kinds of subluxation that exist in that area. One is when two bones that should be properly aligned and adjusted to each other are skewed. <coughs> okay, the, the tip or the sled are the, uh, too close or too far. That's called a segmental subluxation. So on the test, that's one kind. Now, kind number two, it's, it's called a regional, a regional subluxation. And that's what you had today when I checked you. You had a head forward posture from work. The head, the head and neck were not in the proper place. The mid, upper, the upper back, the straight forward. That is a regional subluxation. So it's multiple nerves are affected. <clears throat> okay. Now a global, that next is a global. That's where the whole spine column is deviated to the side or forward or a combination with rotation. Now we have a global subluxation, which is worse, segmental, regional, or global? Answer, the one you have. The one you have, okay. <laughs> the one you have right now. Is it possible, do you think, to have all three of them? Yeah. Yes? That's common. So what do you do? How do you get, how do you get them? Just all of a sudden one day you go like this? No, that takes a long time. How about 
Viv, can you get that one day, one day? Yes, you can. Can you fix this one in one day? Yes. That's what you do when you do the cycle slide and not cycle of release. You're putting things back where they belong. They got misaligned today. And if you do it all repetitively, then you're doing, you're correcting the ones that have been there for a long time. So you cha you're changing, you're lowering the damage, the negative effect of the segmental, the regional, and the global. All of the above. And many times it takes a long, long time to correct them. So just quick, a quick reminder of the concepts of correcting them. When we have a, a pattern that's like this, head forward, forward posture, and that the segmental, the regional, and the global, we can't change, we can't fix the old damaged tissue. I like to use the analogy of old dog. You can't teach an old dog a new trick because it's set in this pattern, it's set in this way. I'm talking about your husband now. <laughs> Very I teach kids. my new tricks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you what you change when you do re the repetitive microtherapy that I've taught you is you're training the new tissue. So when you do a simple exercise, of, like I showed you to recreate motion, you're <coughs> training the new tissue to be better, <clears throat> and you're correcting. Again, old problems and new problems simultaneously. Now, <clears throat> that's a structural biomechanical subluxation. Does it have a negative effect on the chemistry? Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. It took a second, but of course. <laughs> you know, right? You know. Yes. Uh, when? Tomorrow, next year? No, then, now. Right now, right now, just mm -hmm. like flipping the light switch. They change it right now. Mm -hmm. Everything affects everything all the time. So the, the greater your belief in that concept, the more committed you will be to doing self-care. Self-care. I remember years ago, I invited Dr. Reggie Gold, who's a world famous chiropractor, to come to Colorado Springs. And I, I threw a big, a big meeting. And we had, went to a hotel and, and fed everybody. We had a lot of people there. And Dr. Gold came and gave this lecture about what we just talked about, basically. And Andy was there and I, one of my sons who was helping. And, you know, when, when you're raised in the home of, like the, our kids were, you kind of believe part of what dad says. <laughs> you kind of filter it out. Well, he, he came home from, Dr. Gold talks about subluxation in detail. He it's fully explained how the structure affects the chemistry in the mind. And when we got home, and he said, Dad, <laughs> oh, I want you to adjust me. I said, do you have pain? No, but I don't want to go to bed if I have a subluxation. <laughs> I want my body to work right. So I checked him over, did a few little things. He was in pretty good shape. So the next night, near bedtime, Dad, <laughs> will you check me to see if I have any subluxation? That went on for a long, long time. And he, he of course, was very healthy and very strong, uh, very fast. He, he got a scholarship to play football for the Air Force Academy. And he was very much into the whole concept that we talk about. So one of the things I remember most about his pattern is he understood that sleep was critical for his well-being. But at the Air Force Academy, it was not a priority for them. 
they would they would stay up and study, you know, and fool around. And they, because he played football, they get up at four thirty in the morning and go do the stuff. And and the, when they ate, from the time they marched into the mess hall to the time they walked out, it was twelve minutes. So they had to just sh shove it in, you know, like any of that. But he would go to bed. He'd look at his clock and say, okay, I'm going to get up at 4.30. I need to go to bed now. So he'd go to bed at 8.30. But it, it, it paid off. So he is also the only one who was ever caught napping at the Air Force Academy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, all my kids believe in naps. <laughs> in fact, did you have a nap today? I did. I just got up. <laughs> Okay, did I give the best I didn't do Let's go to that now. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk a little more as we go through this. But let's start. Can, can I just interject talking about the subluxations sure. and how everything mm -hmm. affects everything? Because I keep thinking about one of the people I worked with earlier today. She came in and said, that just the other day, for the first time in months, she was having trouble with her bowels, like total blockage, nothing happening. And that was her original condition when she came in months ago, but she'd made such great progress, everything's doing better. And she immediately went on the fence. She said, I've been drinking my water, I've been eating good food, I've been, you know, this and this and that. And I said, I actually have a question for you about your emotions. Because my instinct for you is that it was an emotional subluxation to the area that causes that. And she said, oh, okay. <laughs> and went on to tell me, and that's exactly what it was. So an emotional situation can very much cause a subluxation that you notice as a chemical thing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And on the other side of that same coin, a, a lady who came in recently that has been having six bowel movements a day. And we, again, looked for the trigger. And it was her life in the last year or so has been overloaded with crap, all kinds, like a death of a child, husband, off and left field, and then a lot of other things. So she's trying to eliminate from her life the, the bad things that being manifest in the bowels from the mind. Okay, would someone read for me? Sure. Number one, true or false, subluxation, a word inferring there is an interfer interference of the true or complete intended message. True. Mental, chemical, or structural? All three. Okay. Number two, choose. Sublux subluxations may occur in the head affecting both cognitive and emotional process, in the digestive system affecting both digestion and assimilation of nutrients, in the osseous? I, I or bony structural system affecting nerve function, circulation of the blood and lymph, and normal ranges of motion. Choose. I would say all three. You're yeah, right. That's what Correct. I was going to say. <clears throat> three, true or false. Within the spinal column pelvic unit, it is possible to have a local, a regional, and or a global subluxation. Sure. True. Four, um, true or false, subluxations are always painful and easy to detect and correct. I would say false. I would, and I would agree with you. Many times, <clears throat> subluxations are not painful unless they're found and identified. It's very common when people come to see me and get assessed. I'll ask them, tell me how you've been doing. Oh, I've been doing fine, I've been doing all this stuff, and I feel good, and I think I'm okay. I said, let's check you. When I check them, oh, ah, yeah. So they, 
we then fire them and so what do we do? Do I just fix them? No, I teach them how to correct themselves because we want, want to not have it recur by doing the same old thing and then we want to train the new tissue to hold things better. True or false. Usually any type of subluxation can be corrected simply by making a one-time adjustment of the triggering cause. False. No, let's talk about that for a minute. We'll go back to the head. So oft times people will in their life get off track. They will go astray. They will do things that they know they shouldn't. Because they have a cranial distortion. The brain that is not working like it could and like it should. And when they get that cranium back in alignment, the function improves so that they can have better function mentally to fix past problems, current problems, and prevent future problems. The head alignment is a big, big deal. That's why I have you do the occipital release and microcranial the nasal spread to help you help yourself keep the head in alignment. Now, oftentimes when you have when you have a cranial misalignment that affects the mental emotional patterns of life, it may take you a year or so or longer to make the change in the direction and the patterns that you've developed when you got off track. Okay. Um, most subluxations occur suddenly when tissue tolerance is exceeded, true or false? Do they occur suddenly or just over time? I Obviously, it, ha it does happen suddenly. It can. Yep. I, I think the answer is true, true, but it needs ex explaining. Okay. And the, and the explanation revolves around tissue tolerance. Okay. <clears throat> Oftentimes, people have again. You do, I, I hear that I hear. I've been doing the same thing for three years, and all of a sudden, boom, it hurt me. Why? Well, obviously you exceeded tissue tolerance, and at that time, it broke. Yeah, suddenly. Yeah. What, you know, my mom used to say, with my behavior, that's the straw that break, broke the camel's back. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do that. And my dad would say, it's for easy to stay out of trouble and this to get out of trouble. That concept is real. I mean, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's true. So, and, and again, with the idea of multiple triggers, that's often, probably most often, the cause is multiple triggers. Okay? Both the cause and effect of most subluxations take several months or years to overcome correctly. True. True. Um, usually subluxations have multiple triggering causes and comp com compensatory effects. True. 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 And last times, the compensatory effects can become so significant they, they become a primary problem. So the triggering event causes you to compensate. You run out of energy, exceed tissue tolerance, and develop a new major condition. True or false, it is virtually impossible for me to correct any of my subluxations. False. So which ones are you which ones are you correcting when you do the cycle slide? Segmental 
Reasonable or adorable? All of them, right? All of them, yep. Even when you do simple, the simple things like when you stand on the T-zone, feet together, and you do the circle, your body tries to realign everything. When you lay in bed and you do the cycle slide, you feel changes in the pelvis, your low back, your ribs, and probably your head. Even if you just lay in the back in bed with your pillow under your calves, and you do just a simple like a foot flutter slowly, you'll feel ribs, ribs, real mind. Fresh, fresh, new supplications. You can fix them. So then during the night, when you're lined up better, you feel better. So you can, you can honestly make this statement, I am getting better and better. Every day in every way, because I'm erasing the new subluxations as they occur, and I'm working on the old ones, and then I'm being conscious of not getting new ones. Subluxations are a chief contributing cause to early or premature disability and or death. I'd say true. True. <clears throat> Oftentimes when, when people have a car accident and they have a, we'll call it a whiplash, they have a shearing effect in the spine where they get hit and the segments slide. Sometimes as, as they turn, they get torqued and stuck crooked. And then we treat them for a year or two or three and they're not quite back to where they were before the accident. And that we have an insurance company that wants to get it over with. We have an attorney that wants to settle so he can spend his money. And we have to write a report. And the report will always say something to this effect. Due to the, due to the lingering effects from the injury, and the decreased function of the damaged tissue, this patient will guaranteed degenerate more, more, more quickly. Now, that, that brings up two questions. Do we say to the patient, you'll never get better? No. We say to the insurance company, this patient's gonna have a lot of problems for a long time. And somebody needs to be accountable for that. And at the same time, we help the patient get as better as well as they can. Now, the, the worst thing that can happen is the patient can be hurt bad enough that they get put on disability. And they like disability. <laughs> and then they say, doctor, I don't know if I really want to get Any better. all better. <laughs> I'd like to keep a little bit of this flow coming in. Mm -hmm. So now we have a doctor patient conflict between progress and progress. You know, that makes me think of <laughs> several years back. <clears throat> I had had a pretty significant low back injury at work. It really, like, I couldn't work. And so they put me on medical disability, did the whole thing for a short time. And I remember we went somewhere with my parents we met up somewhere and I mentioned to him that I was being paid state disability so it wasn't like a whole big financial hardship because I still had some of my income and he said disability disability is never a good thing and I thought I disagree <laughs> <laughs> I need the time to repair remodel rest recover and I wasn't bought into, I want to keep mm -hmm. living on their dime. Yeah. But it gave me the time to recover like I needed to. And then say, I mean, they wanted to drag it out longer. And I said, no, if I'm good, I'm ready to go back. But some people would do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I'm, 
I, I hope they didn't give you the wrong impression. I am totally, totally in favor of disability, but totally against becoming dependent on it. For, yeah. for that for that reason. It can just, just be like a bone hung out in front of them to yeah. to pause. To pause progress. You know, yep. Yep. At, at a, because of a dime. That's right. Yeah. Okay. It is common to both create and or correct a minor subluxation on one day. On day one. Oh, on day one, thanks. I thought that sounds funny. Yes. <laughs> True. Okay. True. True. Yes. yes. And re in reality, again, thinking of the whole triangle, mm -hmm. we all get conversations every day mm -hmm. in all areas. And the idea is to, again, in the book, I talk about the windshield wiper principle. At the end of the day, take the time to clean the windshield, you know, free up the body of the mental, emotional junk. You know, the, the, if you watch the news, cancel, cancel, cancel the lies they hear on the media and do whatever you can with your body to chemically be neutral and structurally do the stuff so you, you can heal while you sleep. That's a big deal. When using the affirmation, I am getting better and better every day in every way, the tendency for developing new sublux subluxations is significantly reduced. True. True. If you honestly believe that and have convinced the subconscious mind that that's a true statement, you will consciously make better choices of who you associate with, the things you talk about, the things you read, where you hang out, what you eat. Your, your life will gradually get better and better every day and every way, and you'll feel the power within you. Now, again, in the book, I talk about the concept of the candle. If you think of a brand new candle, that's, I call it a 100-year candle big round, um, you let the flame, yeah, the flame comes, the flame of the candle could burn the same all the way down, now you're 95, and you're good, and you're pretty well done, you got the garage clean. <laughs> You've written your history. <laughs> Finished all the quilts. Yes. <laughs> and you go to bed one night and you wake up in the morning and have a big bright light. That's the goal. But in real life, the wind blows and, you know, sometimes the candle gets real low and you never know. We had a, my sister's granddaughter was coming down Springville Canyon a couple of weeks ago. So it hit some ice, boom, 25, gone. This, you know, the candle got, blew out. So we, ne we never know, but the, the potential is there to die healthy. Now, when I say that, to me, that's a, a goal. To just be done and say, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have a good night's nice rest <laughs> and wake up on. Yeah. Thank you for coming today and thank you for your comments and questions. Thank you. Do you have any more? Anything you'd like to add, any of you? I would like to remind you that I have classes three days, three days away. Oh, we're at three now? Okay. Yeah, I, I limited the Monday. Okay. But we do record one class each week. It goes on YouTube. You can watch them on YouTube. Just tell you how to get there. I encourage you to send your sick friends. You have a lot of, I know you have sick friends. 
to have have them come invite them to come to class. There's no chores. Uh, we have government questions. That's what this is for. Sometimes we spend a lot of time with questions. <laughs>